So one game, whether it's at Bucknell, Oregon State, or in Spain, that you will never forget, um, whether it's because of the way you played, could be the 33 you put up at Quinnipiac, which is your career high while you were here, or it could be just a moment that you had in a certain game. If you have one or two of those games that stick in your mind, what would they be? Yeah, so 2019 Patriot League Championship. Um, I did not play a very good first half at all, but our seniors were just dominating, specifically Slig. And there's this moment in the, in that game where she, 12 seconds left on the shot clock, she decides to shoot a step back going to her left over the most athletic girl in the league. <laughs> and it, I had like an out-of-body experience because I was watching her. I was on the right wing. I will never forget this. And there's 12 seconds left. And as she's shooting it, I'm like, Slick, what are you doing? Like, I say that out loud. I scream at her. And then she just absolutely drains it and just runs back. And I'm just staring at her. And I'm, like, running down the court, like, with my hands up. And at that point, I was like, we can't lose this game. Like, it's not physically possible. Like, if she's going to be doing that, we can't lose. Um, and so, yeah, I just had this, like, almost out-of-body out of, out of body experience watching Caitlin's like, it's, shoot a step back three. It was awesome. Then now, Forever Ray explores a wide array of topics surrounding bison athletics and the lives of Bucknellians near and far, with live interviews hosted by members of the Bucknell Athletic Department. Then now, Forever Ray highlights the university's proud tradition of excellence in the classroom, in the competitive arena, and in life after graduation. Bison Nation, we are back. Another episode of the Then Now Forever Ray podcast. My name is Mike Coleman. I'm the Director of Digital Strategy. And to my right, we have Todd Newcomb, the Director of the Bison Club. It's my pleasure to have Ellie Mack, the Bucknell women's basketball legend, on our podcast today. Let me just roll off a couple stats here from Ellie's career. Okay, she's a 2020 Patriot League Player of the Year, best player of the league. She's a two-time first-team first All-Patriot League in 2019-2020. She's one time Patriot League All Tournament team. She's tied for 21st all time with 1,058 career points, grabbed over 500 rebounds, and she's a four time member of Patriot League Academic Honor. Ellie Mack, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me. So tell us, tell us what's going on with life. How are you doing? Or what are you doing right now? I'm doing really well. I uh, recently got back from Spain. I was playing overseas there for about five months. Um, and then just started a new job at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm a research coordinator um, and really been enjoying that. Yeah, so Ellie, uh, first of all, it's awesome to see you. Every time I see you, you bring a smile on my face. One of my favorite players here at Bucknell. I do recall though, last season, I believe, you were sneaking back into a Bucknell game and we tried to get you on camera. I don't know if you remember this, Mike. Remember this, yeah. And every time we were ready to come out of a break and put you on camera, you had moved around the arena and found somebody <laughs> new to chat with. So it was it was a challenge, but it was great to get you on camera nonetheless. And, you know, Mike mentioned your stats. What he neglected to mention is that you did all that in only three years of play at Bucknell um, because you were injured your first year here. Um, but take us back even before that. Um, Paola, Pennsylvania, Conestoga High School, how do you wind up as a Bucknell Bison? Man, yeah, that was a long time ago. Um, I Thinking back, I didn't have a ton of offers. Uh, you did mention my injury going into my freshman year, but even before that, I had had a different knee injury my sophomore going into my junior year, which is the biggest recruiting kind of period for most girls. Um, and so all my re recruiting was based off one weekend when I was a sophomore in high school and Bucknell just so happens to be there. Uh, coach Roussel, who was the coach at the time, uh, came to one of my games. And so uh, he ended up offering me a scholarship, I think, even after I had surgery and started returning to play. Um, and I think that I really uh, trusted him because he showed a lot of faith in me even after I had uh, an ACL tear. And then, you know, going into my freshman year of Bucknell, that happened again. I tore my other ACL and I just felt like his faith never wavered in me. Um, and so I thought this was the perfect fit for me. And I'm super thankful that I ended up coming to, to Bucknell. It was a great experience overall. So talk about, you know, you, you tear both your ACLs, which is, I, I didn't know I actually toured in high school. I knew obviously toured in college. Talk about 
Talk about the like the recovery process of that of doing it in one knee and then doing it again in the other knee. Uh, I, it was terrible. Like, I, I can't lie. It was not a fun experience either time. I think the first time I was kind of naive going into it and I was, I think, 16. And so I just kind of got through it. I just wanted to get back, you know, playing right away. Um, I probably didn't rehab fully. Like I probably still had some um, inconsistencies just in strength in both sides. And I think I ended up tearing my other one because I, I was almost relying on that knee too much. Um, I tore it in an all-star game in high school. So it was just all around, just dumb decisions. Um, and then the second one, I I was at Bucknell for the majority of my rehab. So it was really great just to be surrounded by a community that was really supportive. I had really awesome teammates who were great all the way through that recovery. Um, but even after I, I got back and started playing again, I think it took me almost a full year, like that whole sophomore year for me first year playing was really a struggle. Like I was not playing to my best ability, um, partially because I had some like mental trauma from both of my injuries. So first of all, kudos to Aaron Russell for seeing the player that you were, even though you were fighting through an injury and, and giving it an opportunity because then you came to Bucknell and we all had the pleasure of watching you play all that time. Um, but talk about, you came, you played for Coach Russell. Coach Russell then gets an opportunity to go to Richmond now you're coming and you're playing for a different coach, Trevor Woodruff. What was that like playing for two different coaches? And then we'll get to your post buck now in a second where you actually played for a third coach. But talk about what it was like playing for the two different coaches and how their styles might have differed and how you had to adjust to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super different styles. Um, but I'm I'm incredibly thankful that I got time with uh, both Coach Woodruff and Coach Roussel. Um, I think Coach Roussel, I was, I was with for three years and – he really provided me like my basketball education. I think like how I see the game now is really through the lens that he gave me. Coach Woodruff has a very opposing style. He's very much about execution and um, a little bit of a slower pace than Coach Russell. And so it was really good to see kind of that side of basketball because it introduced a different side of the game for me, which ended up really helping me um, when I grad transferred and went to Oregon State because um, the program that I played within was kind of a mix between the two. And so I think that balance really um, helped me moving forward. Ellie, you don't have to make it sound nice, okay? Coach Woodruff likes to play <laughs> a really slow snail pace. Can we all go? It is, yeah, it is pretty slow, it but it's also pace. fun to play in. Yeah, they're both really good at what they do. So I like to give Coach Trevor a little bit of a hard time. So, so you played on some, some great teams, right? Uh, you know, won championships, you know, talk a little bit about you know, some of your teammates that you enjoy playing with, um, some of your favorite memories from your playing days here. Yeah, I mean, there's so many. Um, I think going back to my freshman year, I kind of touched on it that um, I had some really supportive teammates going through my injury. Um, and that was a year that we won the Patriot League Championship. Um, and honestly, those are some of my best memories because I was on the bench the whole time. Like I didn't touch the floor at all. I redshirted that year, but I just felt so in tune with that team and, um, seeing Debs and Sune and Meg win that, that championship after four years of kind of coming from the bottom of the league and ending up winning it their senior year was like, honestly, one of the coolest basketball experiences for me, just being able to kind of be a part of that. Um, and then obviously I think going 2019, our team was so good. Like we, we were so good. Um, I was talking to Kate Walker about that not too long ago. Actually, I saw her um, in February. And so we were we were kind of reminiscing about not even just patriotly good, like we were nationally good. Um, and just being a part of that team with, like I mentioned, Kate, um, Abby Cap, Allie Johnson, Slag, um, Kai. I mean, they're just one through 12. Our roster was so good. Um, and and we, we felt like we had something special that entire season. Um, and then obviously 2020 got cut a little bit short, um, but I thought we had a really, really balanced team and we were hitting our stride right towards the end of the season. Um, I think we had, you know, good players at every position with Tessa and Autumn kind of, that was their coming out year where they really started to get more playing time and, and started fitting into their roles. And then, you know, AJ and Abby and Taylor O'Brien uh, Marley got hurt that year, but there were just so many really good pieces, and it was just such it was such a pleasure to be a part of, and uh, so thankful that I got that opportunity to play with all those girls. So maybe not a, a positive memory, probably not because it wasn't for anybody. But you mentioned that year when you guys were really coming together, 
you're about to play that I believe it was a Patriot League semifinal with Holy Cross here in Soika Pavilion when we all got the word that COVID was stopping play. What was that like um, just emotionally for all of you to go through? It was really tough. Um, a few days before the actual tournament got canceled, we had found out that uh, school was going remote. And so we already knew that we were leaving. And so all of this kind of latched on to like basketball is our last hope. It's like, if we keep winning, then we get to stay and keep on playing and be on campus and, and kind of still be in college a little bit. Um, and then I remember we were coming out of shoot around um, and coach Woodruff called a meeting and I was like, Oh, this is not good. Um, and it, it ended up, you know, that everything was canceled. Um, not just our tournament, but the national tournament. Uh, and so it was pretty devastating. Um, and I think the next day, like I left and went home. And so it was just, there was no closure. It was just like, okay, you're done. Um, so I think probably the year following that, I, I it kind of messed with my brain a little bit. Um, just not having that like final goodbye, I guess. Yeah, that was even for me. That was tough to see you guys. You guys were playing so well. Like, you guys were looking at some of your scores. You guys were really dominating the, the Patriots League at the end of that uh, that run. So it's sad to see that come to an end. Um, so I was, I was actually talking to Marley yesterday. And she, this came up about you know, the end of 2020 when that season gets cut. She brings up, you know, how passionate you are of a, a speech uh, person before games. And she said you gave a great speech uh, at the team dinner that night. So she was just, she's talking you up. So, you know, what, what's your, you know, if you remember correctly, what were some of the things that you said to the team after the season was over? I don't remember giving good speeches. <laughs> She might have made that up in her head. Um, no, I probably, I probably was just emotional to be honest in that in that moment. Um, yeah, I probably just told everyone how much I love them. I was probably really emotional. I, I can't remember to be honest. Don't tell Molly she was lying to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ellie, so your time at Bucknell can come to a close, or maybe you stay a little longer and play more at Bucknell and obviously everybody here was, was calling for you to come back and play for the Bison but talk about how the opportunity arose at Oregon State and, and that coach and the relationship you have with that coach and you you know you obviously went there you played two years you played 51 games for the Beavers and started 28 of them so a uh, great experience for you to end your career but how, how tough was it to make that decision to move on from Bucknell and play somewhere else? Yeah it was incredibly uh a hard decision. I think going back, um, I really wanted to get a master's um, of public health. And so that was education was at the forefront of my mind, definitely. And obviously Bucknell does not um, have that, that master's. Um, so that is kind of the reason why I, I moved on. Um, I actually, so Scott Ruick is the head coach at Oregon State. Um, he's been there for, I think, 12 years now. So He's pretty well established. Oregon State has been a great program. They've been to the Final Four in 2016, consistently in the Sweet 16. Um, and so just a really strong program. Uh, I got in contact with him um, through Coach Roussel, actually, they're friends. Um, and he he's a D3 guy, so he coached D3 for most of his career. And as you know, uh, Coach Woodruff is also D3, and Coach Roussel was also D3. And so I think we kind of had that connection of, you know, he went from D3 to Power 5, and now I'm going from mid-major to Power 5, and I just felt like he could really help me make that transition. Um, and then also, just from a personal standpoint, I wanted something a lot different. And, I mean, Oregon is a lot different than Lewisburg. Um, so it was kind of cool just to to see that difference and just, put like, push myself personally, get out of my comfort zone, go somewhere completely different where I don't know anyone, um, which I think in the long run really helped me grow a lot. Um, and then I think kind of the final component was just fan attendance. They get a lot of fans. They consistently lead the Pac-12 in attendance. And so I got to play just in a really cool atmosphere, which I think is super unique for women's basketball. Um, so kind of all those all those reasons made me choose Oregon State. So what was it like? I'm not mistaken. You got a call from, from UConn as well. So what was it like turning them down? <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> Listen, Ellie, I got my sources. <laughs> he knows way too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did. I, I had the opportunity to play at a lot of really great schools. And I think if I was 18, maybe I would have chosen differently. But 
in the moment, I think I was choosing what was right for me at that time. And um, I had to make a lot of really hard decisions, but I know that I made the right decision for me. And I think a lot of people didn't understand why I chose Oregon State, but um, I chose it because I wanted to do it. It's my career and I thought it would be best for me. Um, and I'm, I'm really thankful that I, I had that experience and chose what I did. So you mentioned, obviously, Oregon State's a little different than Lewisburg. Fan base mm-hmm. is different. Um, arena size is different. You're playing in front of a whole different crowd, which we, have, by the way, all got to see you play a lot thanks to TV coverage and all that. Uh, it was always fun for us to follow you, even though you weren't, you weren't wearing the orange and blue. Uh, but what were some of the things that, once you got to Oregon State, that maybe you missed about Bucknell? Was there anything that is unique about this place that you'll always remember? Uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think, um, I think just going back to our team, I will say that at Oregon State, we had a great team dynamic, but, um, I think at Bucknell, it was, it was special, like extremely special, uh, to be a part of. And I don't know if that's just a cultural difference or just kind of how the coaches, um, manifested like team culture. Um, but it was, I just felt so close to all my teammates and I, I very much missed them um, throughout my entire experience in Oregon. Uh, and then I will say that I just love mid-major basketball. Um, there's a, a huge difference between um, playing at the power five level uh, and there's just a difference in playing style. And so I missed the mid-major kind of everyone can shoot. It's just flowing motion. You get to power five and it's like a lot of one-on-one and people are hyper athletes. And so it's just less motion and a lot more like ISO situations. And so I definitely missed playing at the mid-major level uh, at some point. So you, you finish, you know, your, your two years on there and then you decide to, you know, take the next step and play professionally. What was that transition like? You talk about the transition from mid-major to power five. So what was the transition like from power five to professional? Again, like the style is just, is so different um, playing in Spain. Um, it's a lot of, of dribbling. Like I didn't touch the ball that much. I just kind of stood there and shot, which is, I mean, a lot of my career to be honest, but um, even more so in Spain. Um, uh, but it was really cool just to experience that, live in a different country. I think just the personal growth that I experienced from living there is tremendous. Like you learn a lot about yourself when you're over there. You don't know anyone. You don't know the language. You don't know what's going on 95% of the time. And so you have to just kind of like find joy uh, in the game and joy by yourself because you only got you, you know, there's no one else that's really there to help you. And in college, you have this whole support team. So one game, whether it's at Bucknell, Oregon State, or in Spain, that you will never forget. Um, whether it's because of the way you played, could be the 33 you put up at Quinnipiac, which is your career high while you were here, or it could be just a moment that you had in a certain game. If you have one or two of those games that stick in your mind, what would they be? Yeah, so 2019 Patriot League Championship. Um, I did not play a very good first half at all, but our seniors were just dominating, specifically Slig. And there's this moment in the, in that game where she, 12 seconds left on the shot clock, she decides to shoot a step back going to her left over the most athletic girl in the league. <laughs> and it, I had like an out of body experience because I was watching her. I was on the right wing. I will never forget this. And there's 12 seconds left. And as she's shooting it, I'm like, Slake, what are you doing? Like, I say that out loud. I scream at her. And then she just absolutely drains it. And just runs back and I'm just staring at her and I'm like running down the court like with my hands up. And at that point, I was like, we can't lose this game. Like, it's not physically possible. Like, if she's going to be doing that, we can't lose. Um, and so, yeah, I just had this like almost out of out of body experience watching Caitlin's like it's shoot a step back three. It was awesome. I think we all remember that. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's like the most legendary Bucknell women's basketball story you can can really think of. So, so I, we had I asked Instagram uh, what they wanted me to ask you uh, on this podcast, and there was one that stood out that I'm going to ask you. It was from one of your former teammates. I won't say who, but you'll probably know when I ask the question. Is Chance, where did the arm sleeve come from? <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so I've had a couple, this has happened to me every year. So every year since my junior year, towards the end of the season, I'll fall on my elbow because I've, I developed a little bit of a tendency to flop. And so whenever someone bumps into me, I just dive and I'm not very graceful. So I'll hit my elbow and it like my elbow blows up, like it just gets super bruised. And so I started wearing a sleeve my junior year. And then I had a game, like the first game I started wearing the sleeve, I had seven threes against army. And uh, yeah, I just felt like I was on fire. And then the next game we played Loyola and I was like eight for nine from the field. And then we played Holy Cross and I had like three more threes or something. And so I felt like I just, I couldn't, I couldn't miss. And so I just, I, I felt like it was the sleeve. And so the sleeve has appeared every year, every year since in my career. Yeah. I thought you were going to say you were, you know, an Allen Iverson fan or something like that. I wish. No, no. I just started feeling myself a little bit, I guess. I don't know. I like it. Did you figure out who asked the question? Uh, I don't It could be a lot of people. It was one of my teammates. One of your teammates. He's not going to let that uh, out of the bag, but I won't let that out of the bag. <laughs> can you give me a a hint? She was younger than you. Is it AJ? It wasn't AJ. She might have played at Drexel after she was done here. Tessa. Okay. Got you. She was dying for me to ask you that. So <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> A good one. So, obviously, over the course of your career, your career, you played against probably some really good players. Name the top player you played against while you were in the Patriot League, and then the top player you played against while you were at Oregon State. Oh, good question. Uh, in the Patriot League, um, okay, this is a dark horse, but um, the person I hated playing against the most was this girl from American. Um, Number twenty three. I think her last name's Koskimis. I think she's she's from somewhere in Europe. Um, but I I hated playing against her, and she really flew under the radar. Like not a lot of people probably would think that. Um, but I just remember one time my sophomore year, just like her just destroying me every play, and I got pulled and sat on the bench for the rest of the game. So I have nightmares about guarding that girl. Um, and then I think in the Pac-12, uh, Michaela Onyanwere from UCLA. Um, she was the WNBA Rookie of the Year uh, two years ago, I think. Um, I fouled out when we played her. They were the number eight team in the country at the time, and we ended up um, beating them, but I fouled out because my only job was to box her out, and so I fouled her five times boxing out. <laughs> And just, like, I, I felt so physically outmatched. I was just fighting for my life that whole game. Um, so I think that stand, stands out for me in the Pac-12. So it was a humbling moment for you there. Huh? Oh, for sure. Yeah. But we won, so it's fine. Yeah. Well, Elliot, we really appreciate, you know, having you on. It's always great to, to hear from alums. And uh, so, yeah, we just want to thank you for your time. Um, Love seeing you know you guys succeed in life you know, after even after basketball. It's great to hear what you're doing, and uh, just wish you well and uh, anything that you continue to do.